Hey, how are you doing guys? Uh, welcome back once again to HVAC Tech. This time, I'm going to show you how to properly vacuum a, an air conditioning system, right? Before we go through those steps, first, we're going to review some information and we're going to talk about the purpose of evacuation, the evacuation theory, the tools, the gauge manifolds, uh, removing the moisture, the vacuum pump, the micro gauge, and the core removal tool. All right, so we're going to cover a little bit of that information into this process, okay? Well, let's start doing um, a couple of uh, tools. Okay, if you get close, you're going to need uh, your regular gauges. Nothing special, just something that uh, it gives you uh, positive pressure and pretty much inches of mercury or negative pressure. Don't worry too much about the high side pressure. Also, we're going to use a micro gauge. Uh, this is a pretty good tool, you know. Uh, this is from Sapco, and we're also going to be using the micro gauge. We're also going to be using uh, the vacuum pump. This is a really good vacuum pump. This is from JB, and it's a 6 CFM. So, and it's two stage. Um, this runs uh, really good, and um, you know, to do a, a good deep vacuum. Okay, 6 CFM uh, from uh, JB, All right? And also we're going to be using the core removal tool okay core removal tool which by the way I already took up the core pin and later on I'm going to tell you why that I did that right all right and um, well let's go back into a little bit of a theory and let's talk about the purpose of the evacuation okay um, pretty much the purpose of evacuation is to uh, remove moisture and air out of the system okay there should be only two things on the air conditioning system it should be refrigerant and oil the oil comes from the company you know the company puts in the oil into the compressor and the refrigerant also you know either you the technician put the, uh, the free end or the company pre-charge the systems with the refrigerant okay so we should be only two things as this as the system runs the condenser runs it's going to move this oil and the refrigerant through the evaporator to the line set to the whole thing, right? But no more, you know, there should be no air, there should be no moisture. If you allow the moisture of air inside the system, air causes high pressure in the air conditioning system. And moisture will pretty much will cause uh, acid, acids into the, into the system. You don't want that to happen because pretty much when you, your uh, acid become uh, higher numbers, a, your um, your um, what's it called the, the winding inside the compressor could actually be uh, eaten away. We're talking about the insulation. So as acidic the system becomes, as a, as a more as this uh, a chemical, it pretty much uh, dissolves the insulation of the compressor. And if this happens, uh, the compressor will pretty much burn out. This is what they call the burnout of the compressor. And it means all the wine in pretty much comes together and then burns out completely and then you're done. Uh, you know the compressors are uh, uh, hermetic, hermetically sealed, so you cannot open and repair them. Once the compressors burn out, pretty much this is done. Okay? Um, now, the evacuation theory, well, just to give you a, a quick information, the pressure that we have here right now at this moment is 14.7 psi A. A refers to absolute pressure. We need to get lower than 14.7 psi A. We need to get lower than that. Okay. In order to, to get lower and to lower this pressure, we have to use what's called the vacuum pump. Okay. Now the 14.7 psi A, we don't use it normally. What we use is zero psi g. So 14.7 psi a is equal to 0, 0.0 psi g. The g is for the gauge. And they actually make it this way so it's easier whenever you're doing the vacuum or whenever you're recovering or whenever you check the pressure. So we don't have to add any, any numbers up or down. So this actually becomes easier. That's why it's, one thing is gauge and the other one is absolute pressure. Okay? So of that number, the 14.7 or the 0.0, .0 psi g, we have to be below that number. So we can we can say that we 
can say the negative pressure. It's, uh, negative pressure is not a good term, but it's fine. As you guys can see right now, it's zero PSIG, zero PSIG, zero PSIG. The gauges are not connecting to anything. So this is the atmospheric pressure right now, okay? Once again, why it doesn't say 14.7? Well, because this is converted to a gauge system, right? So now both of these are zero. So we need to get lower than zero into the mercury, into the inches of mercury, and very close to 29.82, which equals to 500 microns, okay? If you, if you take a look at the camera, I'm asking my, my friend here to use the camera, can you guys see 29.82? There's no way. So you have to use the special tools in order to get up to that number. Why you have to get into that number? Because that is required by manufacturer to you to have at least 29.82 or this will equal to 500 microns. So can I use my gauges to read microns? I can't. You have to use a special tool, which once again, it says digital micron gauge. With this tool, you're gonna to be able to see those 500 microns. You cannot see 29.82 inches of mercury. You have to see, you can see 500 microns. So every time you guys do a vacuum, it's recommended to use one of these tools. If you don't have this tool, that's fine. You can actually just do the vacuum I see some guys going using you doing the back end all the way close to 30, all right? And then they will leave the, the gauges for a while, maybe an hour, two hours, to see if the pressure goes up. If the pressure goes up, then, then you know there's a leak in the system, okay? All right, this is a little bit of um, evacuation theory. And, well, let's move into, into uh, how to, re to back in the system. All right, you guys can be using your gauges. You're gonna have the low side and the high side. And then let's start connecting the low side. All right, now, as you guys can see, I already connected my uh, core removal tool. Why do I connect my core removal tool so I can remove the core pin? And what's the purpose of that? It's act actually it's faster. Is it it's, it's better to remove the core because there will be more space inside? Instead of having this little valve and giving you maybe about one thirty second opening, when you take up the core removal, the core, it, it will give you about uh, almost uh, what is that? The three, um, I would say eight and a half, you know, maybe three sixteenths of space. So it's going to be better and faster to do the vacuum as you remove the core pins. Okay, so. This valve is closed in my core removal tool. I'm gonna to take up the cap. Oops. And then we're gonna put the low side gauge into the system. Make sure everything's tight. Finger tight. And then we grab the high side pressure and also connect it into my service port. Okay, once again, make sure everything's tight. And then, grab your yellow service hose, and that's gonna be connected to the vacuum pump. Just like that. Before you start your vacuum pump, make sure you have enough oil right now this is the level where the oil is supposed to be, and we got it right there. Make sure the oil is changed every 10 hours of use on the vacuum pump, or every time you, re you vacuum, uh, uh, a, a, what is it called, um, a damaged system, or uh, a system that it was contaminated with the assets, okay? Um, right there, the oil is in the right level, and it's good, ready to go. Make sure the connections are tight. Good, and now, before I start the machine, and this is very important, before I start the machine, let me show you. Make sure the valves are closed. Another important thing, make sure there's no free end in the system. You don't want to do a vacuum if there's free end. The vacuum is only done when you're already done with the recovery, once you're done with the, uh, whatever you fix in the system. So you should never use a vacuum pump as a recovery device. 
Vacuum is only for removing air and moisture. As you guys can see in my system, it's empty. There's nothing in there. Okay? So we're, we're ready to start the vacuum. And i like to show you, before I open the valves, I'm, let me show you something here. Let me start the vacuum pump. And what I want to show you here is that uh, the gauges are not doing nothing because I have these two valves closed. So let me open for you. Open the high side. And let me open the low side. As, as an I open in the, the valves, you can see the gauges are going down. And also, take a look at this. I need to open this valve too from the core remover too. Make sure all the connections are tight. Make sure all this is tight. And then you can open everything. All right? Now, this vacuum process, it says, you have to run it at least for 20 minutes, at least. So you cannot do five minutes, you can't do 10, you have to run it for at least 20 minutes. And if you wanted to see 500 microns on your system, on your uh, micron gauge, you have to have this system to be clean as possible. And I hear some stories about, you know, use or contaminate a system when not able to get all the way to 500. So any brand new installation, if you guys have a brand new installation, you should be able to get 500 microns because brand new means the line set's clean, the, the evaporator's clean, everything's clean, so easily you should be able to get 500. If you cannot get 500 microns, that means maybe the system is leaking, you know, maybe your equipment is leaking, or maybe the bracing connections are leaking. Okay, so right now let's, let's run it for a little bit and um, I'm going to show you how to attach the micro gauge into the system, right? So once again, 20 minutes guys. Let's put the gauge over here. We got at least 20. Of course, on the video we're not going to run it for 20 minutes. And let's take a look back. And as the system is uh, vacuum, this is getting a little bit close to dirty. Some guys in the field, they're like, oh, I'm done. You know, I already have close to 30. Oh, that looks like 30 inches of mercury. You know, this is wrong. The, you know, this is not the proper way. You have to wait at least 20 minutes, and then you have to use a micron gauge because this is pretty much, is not a good reading from the gauges, okay? All right, we'll just run a little bit. It's been maybe a minute and a half, two minutes. You know it's supposed to be 20 minutes, okay? Let me show you how you can attach the micron gauge. First of all, make sure the one side of the micron gauge, it has a cap, and make sure they have, the cap has a seal. Tighten it. Remove the other cap, and we're gonna connect the hose. I have a service hose, another hose. One side of the service hose, it has that pin, and the other side doesn't have it. So you're gonna use the side where it doesn't have the pin because this is 100% open, okay? Disconnect it. Make sure it's tight. You can turn it on, the micro gauge. And then it's gonna do some uh, numbers, some, some, uh, it's gonna give you some squared numbers. Not yet. We're gonna have to connect the, the holes into the system. See, there you go. So right now it's waiting for that vacuum, okay? Now let's connect this gauge. Let's actually, let's go down here and connect the, the holes with the pin into the core remote tool. Let's fix this mess a little bit. We're gonna attach this into here. And as soon as you attach it, It's going to start giving you some numbers. Now remember, some of these numbers, they're not going to show up in the micro gauge yet because you have to wait the 20 minutes. So far, we're not bad. You know, we're doing a good vacuum. The system is old, but it actually is clean. Look, it's showing us 2,500 microns. We're looking for 
500 microns. And in order to get a number, once again, you have to wait 20 minutes, minimum time. Another thing, make sure all these gauges, make sure all these connections are 100% tight. You know, not super tight, but tight. And then another thing, if you want to see 500 microns here, you have to replace your, your, your seals. Inside these connections, you have uh, rubber seals. Let me show you an example here. I just found one of them. This is from the car machine, okay? But these seals, they're a little bit bigger, right? They're all over these connections. So you can actually buy those seals. It will cost you about maybe $8 for one pack with 12 seals. And replace the seals on, the, on your hoses, on your gauges. Replace them. Let's say once a, once a year, you know? Because, you know, we, we got those guys saying, oh, yeah, I never get to 500 microns, and then they have the same old gauges, never clean, never re replace. You can't get 500 if your gauges are leaking. You're going to think that maybe it's the equipment, maybe the system's leaking. No, it's your equipment. It's actually your, your, your gauges, your, your micron gauge, your, your core removal tool. Oh, these things, if you don't take care of them, if you don't keep them clean, uh, they will leak. It will start leaking. You have to keep them uh, lubricated and clean. Make sure you replace those seals. This is a very expensive tool. This is about $60 a piece. This is a yellow jacket. And there you go, guys. Well, like I said, we're not going to wait 20 minutes. But so far, we've gotten to 1,950 microns. Okay? So, just a recap. Let's go back into the gauges. So we can get this done. Once again, if you only use your gauges, you can see that it's, it says something close to 30, maybe 29, but it's going to be really hard to see how much vacuum is actually happening. So it's really hard, just by using just the gauges, it's really hard to see that. Okay? If you want to go precise and don't lose your time or waste your time, then you're going to use the micro gauge. Okay? It's something that is recommended. A lot of guys in the field, they don't use the stuff. They don't like, they don't like them, whatever the decision, it's okay. But it's something that is recommended, okay? And then the other thing is the core remove tool to remove the, the, the core pins from the system. That will help you. And if you got two of them, that also is gonna help you better. But once again, make sure you keep them clean and replace the, the, the seals because then if they start leaking, you will never get the 500 microns. Cool? So, let's say that, okay, we're done with the vacuum. It's completely. Let's say we got the 500 microns. Let's, let's stop it right there. And the first thing you gotta do, close your gauges. This is the first thing you gotta do. Once you close your gauges, shut up the vacuum pump. Shut the vacuum pump. And remember to remove the yellow holes from the vacuum pump. Do not leave the yellow, the surface holes, into the vacuum pump because if you leave it in here, the vacuum that is actually in the holes inside here, even though you close the gauges but there's actually a vacuum here, will suck the oil from the vacuum pump. So make sure this is connected, make sure you cap it, make sure it off. And, make, and don't worry about it. You're like, Paulo, but if I, if I disconnect it, 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 air is going back to the system. No. Because remember, you close the gauges first. Cool? And once you close your gauges, this is where you can actually leak, look at your uh, micro gauge, uh, digital micro gauge meter. And you can see that it's stay at uh, 1,950, actually going up a little bit. Sometimes we go up but then it just goes back a little bit. That is normal from some of these tools, right? Um, well, we're supposed to wait the 500 microns, but it's fine for now. This is the whole process. And um, if there was a leak in the system, I'm just gonna lose this connection. If, if there was a leak, look what happens to the microns, right? If there was a leak, see what happened? All the way to ATM, which means I'm on 30 pressure. There you go. All right, guys. Well, this is the whole process of um, um, doing the vacuum to the system. Um, 
just remember, you have to have at least 20 minutes running the system. Make sure you change the oil in, the, in, the, in your vacuum pump. Uh, protect your investment because those machines are pretty expensive. And um, the manufacturer says every 10 hours of use, you have to replace the oil. And um, there you go. And uh, I think I covered everything else. Micro gauge, core mode 2, vacuum pump. Yeah, no more moisture. So, hope you guys liked the video and I see you guys next time. Thanks.